Good morning, my name is Elizabeth Moran. I'm Director of Education and Research here at FIG. Thank you for joining uh, the webinar today on Managed Income Portfolio Services. I have with me um, Emma Jenkin who is Director of Managed Accounts who is going to be giving the presentation. But before I um, hand over to Emma, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, you should have a panel on the side of your screen. Uh, if you can't see that panel, there's an orange arrow. If you just click on that, it will expand the, the, the panel. And you'll see down the list there, there's an area, area that says questions. So if you have any questions as we're going through the webinar today, please type them in and we'll try and answer them for you. Now, a little bit about Emma. Emma's worked at FIG for four years and has been my colleague over that time. We've worked on a number of projects and she's got an excellent analytical and technical mind, so she's perfect to give this uh, presentation today. But a bit of her, uh, about her, she spent the last 14 years in various roles in, finance, in financial markets, including a stint at UBS in Asia. Now, um, as we go through the presentation today, just before we do start, I just want to make you all aware that um, the MIPS or the, the Managed Income Portfolio Service is for wholesale investors only and uh, we can only provide general advice. Also, uh, we make the assumption that you um, have done an introduction to fixed income, so there may be some terms you're not familiar with in this uh, presentation. But if you haven't done that introduction to fixed income, just email me in or let, let us know and we'll send you a link to a webinar so you can uh, catch up at some time later on. But without further ado, I'm very delighted to introduce you to Emma Jenkin. Thanks for coming and presenting, Emma. Great. Thanks, Liz. Uh, I'm very excited to be here today um, to talk about our new managed income portfolio service, which we call MIPS for short. Um, our new service is a first in the Australian market and offers investors a direct portfolio of bonds that's professionally managed. Um, the Managed Income Portfolio Service offers a higher regular income stream from your own portfolio of bonds. So all the income is paid on individual investments and that can go straight into your funding account. In, MIPS provides direct ownership of the bonds held in your name via a managed account. This is similar to how many people hold their equities. The critical point is that the bonds are held in the investor's name so they are segregated from all the other investors' decisions. Okay, so Emma, that's a really good point. So they're held in your own name and you can get all the income through to you just as if you were a, a, an individual or direct investor. So there's no uh, restriction on that income. That's exactly right. We've endeavoured to take the best of the direct bond service and just overlay professional management. Um, it's also um, important to note that this differs to managed funds where investments are pooled. These investments are segregated and held in your own name. Uh, your MIPS portfolio is looked after by the portfolio management team. So you put your money into MIPS and then the team take over. So they select the bonds and then they manage your investments. So the teams are monitoring the market uh, the whole time to risk manage your portfolio, but importantly also to optimise your return. They're looking for opportunities to improve your portfolio return and hence your income. Unlike equity markets where there's open access, the fixed income markets are predominantly OTC or over the counter. So by using MIPS, that portfolio management team is investing for you alongside those institutional investors. Um, at FIG, we're the fixed income experts. So we have over 130 people nationally with a wealth of experience across the portfolio management team, sales, research and education. So by selecting MIPS, you're tapping into all of our knowledge to and, and experience to help look after your money. I think that sounds great. It's uh, certainly a lot of work in my role just reading, keeping up to date with what's going on just in our market. So uh, to have access to all those people is, is a real advantage, I think. Yeah, look, I think a lot of investors are looking for um, the option to have um, fixed income market professionals looking after their money. Um, they're complex fixed income markets uh, and uh, you know, there's the macro environment, um, local economic conditions, and then there's the credit work itself to be done on the bonds, and that's something we do all day, every day. Great. So taking a look at the main features of BIPs, the first is that discretionary portfolio management, which I've touched upon. Um, the team's headed up by Owen Hung, who brings a wealth of experience from 
offshore. He's been in New York, London, Hong Kong, and um, looking particularly at the credit work, which is assessing the viability of the companies. And so that team has the discretion to look after your portfolio. As I touched on, they look at the macro environment, so that's broad, it's interest rates, it's inflation, it's economic growth, it's fiscal policy, it's credit spreads. And they look at that, all, of, all of those factors to form a view in um, the asset allocation for your portfolio. They then look at the credit of the individual bonds that they're going to put in your portfolio and they undertake analysis of the individual issuer's situation, their business prospects, their, um, their outlook to, to determine whether you'll, to ensure you'll get paid your coupons and your money at maturity. And of course, they, they continuously monitor those companies as well. So they're always assessing the risk um, risk return of your holdings. I've got a couple of questions for you, Emma. Is it a good time now to have a bit of a break? Sure. Um, so Ian has asked, under MIPS, can retail investors get access to bonds that are traditionally only available to wholesale investors? No, unfortunately they can't. Uh, this is a wholesale only product at this stage, but we are working on a retail um, investment program, but it is probably 12 to 18 months away. There's um, greater levels of complexity from our side involved in creating it. So it's for wholesale investors only. That's fantastic because that actually hopefully answers your question too, Alan. So I will let you continue, Emma. Great. Um, I wanted to touch on transacting services and why this is so important in bond markets. So unlike in equities, where anyone can trade online and buy and sell stocks. That's not the case in bond markets. As I mentioned, it's over the counter. Um, so the portfolio management team are able to do two things. They, they're able to aggregate the MIPS investments and use those sort of block trades, if you like, to go and purchase bonds in the market and get better prices. Um, but they're also talking to the market all the time. So they spend about half their day talking to the various parts of the bond market to source bonds. Um, in, to make up the MIPS portfolios. Another key point is wherever they purchase bonds, that's the price that goes into your portfolio. So effectively they're bought at cost. Great. Um, on to the custody admin and reporting. So your MIPS portfolios are held in big custody. Um, we look after all the portfolio administration for you. So what we're aiming to do here is make it really simple for you. Um, so you can get on with your life and enjoy your um, your retirement. Um, but we do know transparency is very important. So there's continuous reporting on your portfolio. You can access that online at any stage and see your exact holdings and when your coupons are going to be paid. Oversight and governance is important so you've got complete um, confidence in your investments. You know, as we've taken on the discretionary part of um, MIPS, that means we can manage your portfolio. So we've put in in place three levels of checks and balances. These are the Portfolio Management Committee, they look at the risk protocols and the risk governance, the Supervisory Committee, this is a majority independent committee and they're responsible for looking at governance as well but also returns, pricing and portfolio turnover. Finally, we're audited by a big um, accounting firm as both the custodian as MIPS. So this is all intended to provide you peace of mind you know, that your investment is being properly looked after. That's great, Emma. I think that's really important. Everyone needs to be comfortable with where they're investing their funds and that they're going through proper process. So highlighting those is, is fantastic. Thank you. I have a, um, another question too from Ronald. And Ronald asks, is the bond portfolio common to all MIPS investors or does it vary from client to client? That's a great question. Uh, the answer is that it can vary from client to client. In order to be able to make a bond managed account, what we've done is we've created investment programs, which I'll get to in a moment, and every investor's investment will comply with that investment program. But effectively, they'll have an individually managed account, so they will potentially have, or well, they will have a unique portfolio. However, having said that, if you invest in the core income, for example, your portfolio will look broadly similar to, you know, most of the other people who own a core income portfolio. Excellent. And another question from Michael. Michael asks, can an existing portfolio be transferred into a MIPS and is there a review process before the transfer? Yes and yes. So yes, bonds can be in specie transferred across to MIPS, 
but the portfolio management team will check those bonds to make sure they're appropriate to move across and uh, they may sell down some of those bonds, but they will look at those bonds first and um, provide a tick off as to which ones can be transferred into MIPS. Great. I've got another couple of questions, but I think we'll just let you keep going for a couple of slides because I think some of those um, questions will be answered in the presentation. Great. Thanks, Liz. So I've just run through quite a lot of detail there about MIPS, and I think the important point is that's all what we do for you. So um, we've set up MIPS to take those four key components and look after those for you so that you can invest in fixed income, direct in fixed income, but in a simple and convenient way. So now taking a look at the investment programs that I touched on briefly before. There are four investment programs for wholesale investors to select. These have been created by a portfolio management team and they spend a lot of time setting these up and thinking about the appropriate program limits in order to provide access to bond market to meet investors' risk return appetites. So looking at the three defined programs where investment starts from 250000 we have the core income program. So this provides regular income with low risk. It's a senior debt only portfolio, so that's the very top of the capital structure with a high allocation to investment gauge securities. The current target return on this portfolio net of fees is 4.25%. Now this is the baseline return or the yield to maturity and active management is expected to add to that return. The second investment program is the income plus. So this offers higher income with moderate risk. This can include bonds from the whole capital structure and the whole credit rating spectrum. So that means both rated and unrated bonds. So this uh, portfolio invests in higher risk companies that are carefully selected by the team. So it's really important the credit work that's done by Owen and his team to um, get very comfortable that the companies will pay their coupons and their um, money um, maturity. So the higher risk though is of course compensated with higher returns and the target return on this portfolio is 5.4% net of fees. These are all the current levels of returns. And of course like the um, core income, that's the base expected target and with trading or when we'll be looking for opportunities all the time and I, and I imagine trading the bonds to try and achieve higher returns for investors. That's right. He'll be looking for opportunities in the market um, and then assessing the credit of those opportunities and whether they add value to the portfolio, both in terms of diversification and of course return. Fantastic. The third portfolio is an inflation linked uh, program. It's an inflation hedge portfolio. So most of investments across the market, the payments are not linked to inflation. This is intended to be a pure inflation hedge that's linked to the headline inflation number. The issuers are mainly government and semi-governments and some corporate bonds. So this is a very conservative portfolio. The current target return on the portfolio is 3.3% net of fees. Now the fourth um, option is to cu customise. So we can customise, that means we can create a program to meet whatever requirements, whether they're ethical, social and gov um, governance, credit restrictions or liquidity requirements for investors from 5 million. This has particular appeal in the not-for-profit sector and for investors with um, specific um, needs. Great. Um, before we move on, there are a couple of questions. So um, Ron's asked, what is the minimum dollar investment? And of course, you've just said 250000 but he also asks, um, and is there a daily uh, price visible on his, on his uh, screen? Can he see the pricing? Yes, Ron, you can. Um, on my feed, you can log in, you can see your bonds every day and you'll be able to see the price that will be the previous day's close. Fantastic. And uh, both Ron and Michael ask, how do they how do they exit? How do they get money out of uh, MIPS if they need it? So you need to keep a minimum of 250000 invested in MIPS, but assuming you had a larger balance than that, you can draw down and we've got a Best Endeavours 10 business days to return those funds and that's just to ensure we get best execution on exit mm -hmm. or alternatively a complete sell down, so um, a, I guess a termination of your investment is 30 business days okay. and there is actually a third option which is transferring your bonds out specie into a direct bond account and holding them there. Okay, so if you had, if 
say I invested $250,000 and I needed $50,000 for a wedding or a trip, um, I would need to sell down my portfolio or um, transfer it to a direct um, um, portfolio and then I could just sell bonds to take the 50000 and then if I had further money, I, I had received further money in a year or so, I could then transfer back in. Is that right, Emma? That's correct. Okay. Um, there's a few other questions here, but I think I'll keep go I will let Emma keep going um, because, again, she may answer some of them, but we will uh, attempt to answer more as we go through. Great. Thanks, Liz. So now taking a look at a case study of the types of investors in MIPS and how they choose um, different programs. So here we have um, conservative investors, Ryan and Amanda, and they've been using TDs for income. But as the rate offered by the banks has declined below 3%, this is not providing them enough income anymore. So we see many investors like Ryan and Amanda who are looking to invest in bonds to create a higher income stream. However, Ryan and Amanda don't know much about the bond market and they don't want to become the fixed income experts. They'd like to be able to travel without worrying about their investments. They've also they've never invested in bonds and they don't know much about the fixed income market. However, they do have a managed account for their equities and they see the benefit of having a professional management team making decisions and watching the markets on their behalf. So they've selected the core income program as they want low capital volatility and this provides them with an expected return of at least 4.2% and that's 1.2% over the best TD that they can find. So this is really going to help them meet their living expenses. So looking at that core income program in a bit more detail that Ryan and Amanda selected. So this is a conservative portfolio with the majority of bonds being investment grade. So at least 85% of this portfolio must be held in investment grade bonds. So looking at the July portfolio created by the portfolio management team, you can see um, all the bonds are rated in the triple B spectrum except for SCT Logistics which is, un, um, which is unrated and represents just under 15% of the portfolio which is the maximum amount for unrated bonds. So this allocation to investment grade bonds will likely result in lower price volatility. So for these conservative investments they want a strong income stream but they want low capital volatility. The target return as I've mentioned is 4.25% net of fees and this is the baseline and so the active management that we've discussed will add to this. So this provides Ryan and Amanda with the income they need to meet their expenses. You'll also note here um, the chart up in the top corner you can see that uh, the portfolio has got a mixture of fixed rate, floating rate and inflation linked bonds. So now, currently the portfolio management team have a higher emphasis on fixed rate bonds as they value the certainty of fixed income in the current in, um, interest rate environment where they view rates and figures a house views rates as being lower for longer. Okay, I've got a couple of um, questions. Is that is it a good time now sure. to ask Emma? Okay, um, a couple of things. Where do I start here? Peter has asked, can you state the running yield targets? Now, I I'm not sure there are running yield targets or income targets on the portfolio. Peter, looking at the one that Emma's um, provided though, and most of the bonds are fixed rate. I'm assuming that the running yield would be actually higher than that target of 4.25%. I don't know for sure, uh, but perhaps Emma, you might want to answer that, that. That's right, Liz. It is. It's currently at about 4.9% is the running yield on the portfolio. We tend to focus on the yield to maturity because that reflects your overall return, but the um, the portfolios are deriving strong um, income yields as well. Okay, and I've got a couple of questions here. Um, Graham asks, can you um, give me a couple of disadvantages of a MIPS, please? Yes, I can. I, I think one of the key ones is around control. Mm -hmm. So with MIPS, you're handing over to the professional management team, the portfolio management team. So they're empowered to make the decisions on your behalf. So you don't get to say, I don't like that bond. Um, and the portfolio management team won't ask you before they sell a bond and buy another bond. So that may have tax implications for you that you don't control as well. So they're the two um, big disadvantages. It's really around control and potential um, if, you, if you're tax planning 
and you were you didn't want to sell a bond for certain reasons. Okay, that's great. That sort of ties in with um, a question from Michael, and he's got a concern. He said, um, with managed funds, um, there's a risk of churning by managers. How is it proposed to minimise this in a mix? We've thought about that one a lot because this is intended to be a portfolio that derives strong income. You, the portfolio management team adds um, value by changing the bonds in the portfolio, but it's not an actively traded hedge fund type portfolio. Um, so we've got a soft target um, limit of 35% on the turnover. Um, it's a soft target because there will be market conditions where that potentially needs to be a larger amount. So you may, there may be a circumstance where you want to move all to cash or where there's a really good opportunity that improves all the portfolios and so you want to breach that 35%. For the portfolio management team to do that, they need to go to the supervisory committee, explain their reasons and get sign off to increase the turnover over 35%. Great, that's fantastic. So there is that, that limit. I'm, I'm pleased to hear that. Okay, so Ron asks, this is a very good question. I really like this question, Ron, thank you. Does the team analyse individual accounts such that if my capital appreciation on one particular bond is say 10% and the profit ought to be taken, do they do so or does the responsibility to arrange that fall to me? Good question. So what the portfolio management team does is they look at both the overview of all the bonds that are held across all of MIPS and make sure they're very comfortable with all the names and the value. They then also analyse the individual portfolios. And where that would happen, Ron, is where there was another opportunity um, to buy a new bond and they would look at what the accretive value to the individual portfolios was of switching that bond. And in that case, that 10% bond would be an obvious one to switch out of. Okay, excellent. Um, Jenny's got a, a very good question too. She wants to know what your year-end statement looks like. Um, for example, for tax purposes, what items are detailed in the in the statement? So in the year-end statement, uh, it covers both the historical performance, so it shows you the three month, uh, one year, etc. over time, um, historical performance in terms of total return and total realised return, and then it shows you the current portfolio metrics. So you can see what your current portfolio is expected to have be in terms of yield to maturity duration. It also contains all the coupons that have been paid in that year and any realised capital as well. So that's all you'll need for your tax reporting and it clearly states the fees as well. Excellent. So it's all rolled in there. It's all in the one statement. Fantastic. A couple of very quick questions now and then I'll pass back to you. Um, so we have um, Robert ask, can you roll some of your current bonds over into MIPS? Yes, you can. Uh, and as we sort of touched on before, the portfolio management team will assess that portfolio uh, and then most bonds I'm sure they'll be able to move across. But an example would be foreign currency bonds can't move across. Mm -hmm. You would have those would be sold separately if you wanted to transfer the funds in. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be unusual really, is it, for people to have some funds in MIPS and some funds direct. So um, I think that might be quite a standard going forward. Yeah, we've seen we've already seen many investors that are choosing to they like looking at one part of the market, uh, they might like doing the foreign currency bonds, they do that themselves, and then they hand over the core income or income plus to the MIPS team. Other investors are concerned about inflation, so they put some money in there, and then they may be doing their own bigger reinternation bonds themselves. So people are using all sorts of combinations that suit them, and I guess the amount of interaction they want to have in terms of the day-to-day -day in the bond markets. And then of course we have other investors that say, I don't want to look at this at all, I would like you to take over and put their money all into MIPS across various different programs, so they're splitting their money. That sounds fantastic. Uh, one last question before we go on and it pertains to this portfolio and Michael asks, what fees are coming out of these net income figures? Good question. So based on $250,000 investment, the total fees for the core income and the inflation linked are 0.85% and the total fees for the income plus are 1.05%. Now that reflects the additional credit work that's done for the income plus. Excellent, I'll let you keep going with the presentation. There's a couple of other questions but we'll get to those in a minute. 
So now having a look at the portfolio manager's favourite bond. So as I, I touched on, Owen Hung, who heads up the team, has a wealth of international experience. And in particular, he's got a really strong background in the analysing of the credit worthiness of companies. And he brings that expertise to assessing the bonds that his team selects for inclusion in your portfolios. So Owen's favourite bond is SCT Logistics. They issued SET issued a fixed rate bond paying 7.65% maturing on the 24th of June 2021. This bond is in both the core income and the income plus target portfolios. So what makes Owen like this bond? Basically, to summarise, he likes the industry, the business and the outlook for SCT. So SCT is a national modal transport and logistics company. It's a well established business with stable family management and a strong market share. It's a concentrated industry and this means that there are high barriers to entry and results in an oligopoly style environment. They also have consistent and predictable revenue streams and the nature of the business leads to long dated contracts and they have very good long term relationships. So this is all really good for bondholders because it impacts positively on SET's ability to pay its interest when it falls due. Um, also, Owen also looks to the strength of the balance sheet, which indicates the ability to pay the debt at maturity, and he likes the balance sheet ratios. So having established that the strength of the business balance sheet and liquidity are all good, which are the keys to the credit of the companies, we talk about credit a lot and that's what that means, and his team would spend two to three weeks looking at an individual company and doing this analysis, um, modelling up the balance sheet, looking at the cash flows, looking at the contracts, who their key relationships are, length of those relationships, all that work that goes into that is what the MIPS team does on your behalf. So once they've done all of that and they like um, the company, they like the credit, then Owen can, will compare SCT to other bonds in the market, other comparable bonds. And in doing so, he's identified that SCT offers um, really good value. So the yield to maturity on SCT is 7.25%. And comparable bonds as to the portfolio management team for your credit are around that five, five and a half to 6%. So there's a significant additional amount there for the SCT bond. Great. I love to get that personal insight into the portfolio manager and what, how they're thinking and um, bonds that they like. So I'm really pleased to hear. I think SCT is a, is a very good bond. Um, okay, let's, let's move on. So just to recap on the key benefits, so you know this is this goes to why we created MIPS and what it achieves for investors. It's really about convenience and simplicity. So you're handing over the management to the MIPS team, but your fixed income still deriving that regular income stream for you. It's uh, leveraging their in-depth credit and market insights. So it's that team's wealth of experience that you get to tap into, and you know that they're looking at your positions at all times. And of course, it's active management. So it's that really important part of bond markets because they're OTC. A bond, there may be a new bond in the market, and this could be at any one of the investment banks or um, big four domestic banks. They may be a new, they may bring a new issue to market, and the team will know about that. They'll be working on it, working out whether it fits into your portfolio, assessing the relative value, and they can move very fast on your behalf. Those books often close in 24 hours. They can make those quick decisions if the bond's appropriate for um, the various investment programs. So the next steps, look, it's very simple. You download and review the IM from our website. This contains all terms and conditions. You choose your investment program that meets your risk return requirements. So that's the core income, the income plus, or the inflation linked. You can also choose a combination of programs, as I mentioned. You fill out the application form and our client services team can assist with this if you've got any questions at all about the detail. Then FIG will set up a funding account and a custody account for MIPS and you can transfer in the money or you can use BC transfer in bonds as we've discussed. Then the PMT, PMT team, being the portfolio management team, takes over. So they'll create your portfolio and manage that for you. Finally, and it's, this is also um, is very important, you've got complete transparency. So you can see your holdings, portfolio performance. You can see all the transactions as well. We won't be sending out transaction statements because the MIPS team will be managing that, but you can see all your transaction statements 
online on your MyFig. You can also see the valuations as well, and we're obviously we're now using an independent pricing source to value the bonds in your MIPS portfolio and your funding account balances. So all that is contained on your MyFig. And of course the income, as it's paid on the individual bonds, goes straight through to your account. So it's not like all one or the portfolio management team make a decision to pay you an income or, or not as they would in a managed fund. The income is yours and it is paid to you unless, is, it, is there an option to reinvest? There is an option to reinvest. So if you don't need the money at the moment, you can opt to, you tick a box on the application form and um, the money will be reinvested by the team and you can change that option right. at any time. Okay, fantastic. So just looking uh, at this last slide here where you can get further information, um, we've got a MIPS website. Uh, which has got a whole lot of information there. I think many of you have already been to this website in order to both download the pack and register for the seminar, I'm sorry, the webinar. Um, but if you'd like to talk to us further, please call in and speak to your dealer about MIPS. Um, but now we might go to some more questions, I think. I've Chris. got a few, so <laughs> I'll run down the list, Emma. Um, Karen asks, um, if you have ethical concerns about some companies, can you uh, stipulate that these not be included in your portfolio? You can do that, but that you can only do that from five million. Right. Um, we have three investment programs predefined currently that start at 250, and I expect over time we'll expand that out. We would like in future have to have foreign currency programs, and I can also see over time we may have enough demand to determine that we need a, an ESG um, managed portfolio as well. But at this stage, the only way you could do that is through the customised option. Great. Um, Michael asks, does the management fee include custodial costs? The fees I quoted were all in fees, so that was a combination of the management fee and the custodial cost. And is that for all three accounts? Is it the same? Is the same um, fee basis for all the, the three? So accounts? just to recap on those, it's a combination of the management fee and the custody fee. So yes. for the core income and income plus. Yes. Sorry, core income and inflation linked. It's 0.85 percent. Yes. And for the income plus, it's 1.05 percent. Okay. So it's slightly higher. Great. Um, Joe asks, uh, this is a great question, Joe. how does FIG staff manage all the investment portfolios to get value for their clients? There may be many. We're hoping, Joe, that there'll be many, uh, but that's a good question. So perhaps, Emma, you want to address that one? Yeah, definitely. So there's a couple of ways. So we have a, a very good portfolio management system, um, which allows us, or allows the portfolio management team to manage on both the macro level. So by that, I mean, the, the aggregated bonds across everyone's portfolios. And that's really key for risk management and to make sure that the view on bonds is consistent across the smaller portfolios. Then down at the individual portfolio level, um, we've got the, they can review all those portfolios and run um, very, uh, very complicated queries to pull out different portfolios there as well. However, I would say, Yes, they're individually managed accounts, but the way they're practically managed is the, the team runs model portfolios and investors actually go into those model portfolios. And one or two bonds may be different, but over time I expect that the portfolios will look similar as bonds get changed in and out of portfolios. So it's a very efficient way to manage individually managed accounts um, and to provide people with a direct bond portfolio that is, is direct. So I guess like in time, for example, um, bonds uh, might do very well, SCT might do very well, the price might rise and then Alwyn may make the decision, well it's time to switch out of SCT, take the profit and invest somewhere else. So he would do that across the entire, everyone's portfolio, they'd all be switched out at the same time. Would that be how it would work? Yes. Okay. Um, but the, the, the caveat there I would say is that depending on what the replacement bond is, yes. he would also be looking at across the various different programs yes. because it's in both the core income and the in-class. So the replacement bond may be several bonds. Yes, great, fantastic. Okay, um, 
uh, we have a question from Michael again. If a new bond becomes available and the manager is reluctant to dispose of any existing holdings, will the investor be contacted via additional funds? So I'm, I'm assuming there, Michael, that we have a portfolio for you with 250,000. It's invested in five, six, seven, eight bonds, and a new bond comes out which we like, but doesn't want to sell out of any existing bonds. Would we say to you, do you want to put in an extra 50,000 and have this bond to, to add this bond to your portfolio? I don't know that we would do that. That sounds a little bit complicated to me. No, I don't think we could do that. But I guess that would really come down to a relative value question. So what the portfolio management team would be doing is looking at the existing portfolio, the credit, and then looking at the new bonds credit, and then looking at the relative value. So assuming the credits were the same and there was a, a a real benefit to changing the bond, so there was additional value in terms of return, then they would switch the bonds. Um, but if, if, there, if that wasn't the case, then that, that's how I would see the scenario where they wouldn't be switching the bond. No, okay. Um, Ron asks, is it intended that the investor hold the portfolio for years or can the investor treat the funds like a six month term deposit? The intention is that these are three to five year investments. So, but Things come up in people's lives and we recognise that. So um, there is the ability obviously to sell down and we can do that in a very efficient manner um, if at six months someone needed the funds again. I think one of the advantages of the, um, of the new service is the fact that you can change into and out of it from a direct service. So if you have direct bonds, you can put some of your direct bonds in. If you need funds and you don't want to sell the whole of your portfolio, you can transfer it out, sell down. I think that um, is a real advantage that perhaps other companies can't offer at this point. A couple of other um, questions here though. Um, Heather asks, um, will there be any change in the level of service for non-MIPS clients? Well Heather, I'm going to answer that one and I'm going to say definitively no because uh, the portfolio management team is quite separate to the rest of FIG and to the sales staff. So they're quite, it's quite an individual unit uh, and so we would imagine no difference uh, in, in service to you. For example, all the education and the research that we make available now, that won't change. Um, it's just that Alwyn and his team will be um, looking at, at a higher level, if you like, because theoretically they'll be managing larger sums of money. Um, Emma, do you want to make any comment on that? Yeah, no, this is not meant to take away from the direct bond service at all. This is another option for those investors who would like to have someone, someone taking over the active management of their money for a whole host of reasons. Um, your, your dealer or client representative still remains, for those existing clients, still remains your point of contact for both MIPS and for your direct bonds. So that doesn't change at all. Okay, I've got just maybe a final two questions here, Emma. Um, John asks, what percentage of wholesale investors does FIG expect to move to MIPS? John, I, I can't answer that at this stage. Um, although, uh, one way I think I can answer it is, I think having been to several lunches in our soft marketing mode, I think roughly a quarter of our investors were really interested in MIPS. Uh, I think for existing investors, it goes around how active they want to be. So some see it as um, maybe not at this point in time. They're very happy, happy doing all the credit work themselves, the active management, talking to dealers, you know, transacting in bonds. But they can see a future time where they no longer want to do that, and they'd like to hand over. And they say MIPS is a great way to do that. Um, then for new investors, there may be some who you know, we haven't had this option previously, but who say, I don't want to become the credit expert. I like doing my equities. I don't want to do my fixed income. I'm happy to have you to do it for me. Excellent. I think that's a fantastic answer. Um, and two, two last questions. Uh, one from Robert. Robert asks, if you roll your existing bonds over to MIPS, does the manager sell them or switch them over to the new bonds? at current prices or do they sell them down over a period of time to maximise your return? So I think what Robert's getting at there is do we sell the bonds uh, or do is it, or is it a straight transfer? 
it can be a combination. So the first thing that happens with an in-specie transfer is the portfolio management team assesses those bonds, assuming that all the bonds move over, or actually assume four out of five move over, and the fifth bond is sold down immediately because say it's a foreign currency bond and that can't go into MIPS, so that then the proceeds would come across. The other four bonds go into MIPS, then they would assess them and several of those bonds may form part of the portfolio and they'd be kept. The other bonds that remain they would then be sold down in a managed way over time in order to then um, be replaced by the bonds selected by the portfolio management team. Fantastic. And um, just this last question from Ian. Now listen, if I before I ask you, Emma, if we haven't answered your questions today, uh, someone from FIG or the, the managed um, income portfolio team will get back to you and, uh, and answer you. But this last one from Ian, he's wanting to know what is the benefit of MIPS compared to a managed bond fund? Why choose MIPS over the managed bond fund? So there's several reasons um, and they're really around uh, transparency and control. So a managed bond fund can provide you access to a very large universe of bonds, um, but what it can't do is you don't know what you own. And for a lot of investors, they're looking for that level of transparency. You're also, you're pulled, it's a pooled investment in a managed fund, whereas this is not, MIPS is not, it's a segregated investment, so it's in your name, so you have control over that. It also provides you with that access to income, and you, that's the interest payments or the coupon streams, and you can see those on your online portal and you can plan around the income that's going to be coming in on MIPS, whereas in a managed account you don't have that either transparency or control over the, um, your investment. Fantastic. I just want to thank you very much for presenting today, Emma. I found it really informative. I hope everyone listening did as well. Um, I'd encourage you all to go onto the um, MIPS uh, space, onto that website fig.com.au backslash MIPS private and have a look around. We're very happy to uh, call you or arrange a meeting if you're interested uh, in finding out more about MIPS. Um, we'll certainly uh, be happy to, to have that meeting, but uh, this really concludes the presentation today. Thank you all very much for joining and we look forward to, uh, for, to you hopefully joining us again in the near future. Uh, this now concludes the presentation. Good morning. Have a good rest of your day. Great. Thank you.